This is the Web Talk Show. My name is Nico Gutje, and today I'm talking to one of the stars of the Magic Flute, or in German, Das Vermächtnis der Zauberflöte. Very welcome, you and Rian. How and where are you? Hello. <laughs> good, thank you. It was bad. Am I right? I was pretty good. <laughs> Tried my best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You play Papageno, maybe one of the most uh, well-known figures in opera history. So what have you felt the moment you were asked or considered to play him? Um, it's a real honor, you know. It, it, it sort of came along at a time when the world was locked down and um, it was kind of strange and I was worried that I was never going to work again and all this stuff and then this wonderful script came and um, and, the, and the opportunity to play a character that's so fun and light and silly and um, yeah, I just, I just had to do it and um, yeah, I'm just so sort of privileged to have got to, to sing Mozart, you know, you don't, you don't get, as an actor, I never expected to be, a, to be doing an opera um, in my career. So yeah, it's great, it's a privilege. You thought you would never work again? Well, you know, yeah, <laughs> I always do. <laughs> But I, I think, you know, with, we didn't know what, how, how the world was going to wake up after COVID and how we were going to, you know, how the industry was going to look. And you just, I think, you know, start to get a bit paranoid as an actor. Well, well I'm happy you get out of that thought yeah. by this job. <laughs> you are singing two of the three big hits of the Magic Flute. So let's talk about the first one, the very well known, like everyone is uh, starting to join you when you will start singing, is of course Der Vogelfänger bin ich ja. Did you had a hard way to find yourself into that music? Um, yeah, we, we had a fantastic singing coach, uh, Sam Kenyon, who, who, you know, he really gave us great confidence. Um, and sort of helped me develop a different way of singing. I've always been a singer, but to approach something like this is completely different. Um, so yeah, it, it was just, um, you know, obviously it's very daunting to have to approach this iconic song and this iconic character, but I just had to sort of treat it like any, any other, you know, job or any other role and just commit to it fully. Um, luckily, Papageno is not the most difficult part to sing um, because, uh, I, I, yeah, it, it was, it's, quite, it's not too tricky. Um, so I managed to find it okay, yeah. And, but it's, it's to bring a char the character to it and, and not, to be, not to sort of be, to feel that I needed to be like, ah, you know, to kind of just to bring the character that I was going to portray in the, in the film as well and to, um, even though to stay faithful to the music because it's, it's amazing but also not to feel trapped by, by this sort of stereotype of opera. And as an actor, you had to dig deep into yourself to find Papageno, or was he right about that? Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's quite close to me. <laughs> It was great, you know, just to get to, to play such a fun little character. And um, yeah, he's light and... Yeah, nothing, you know, it was great. I think you had to record the songs first so you don't have to sing live on set. Yeah, well, I think you, you, just the, the, the technicality of singing on set is, is it's very difficult um, for the sound. So for whatever reason, they decided we'd record everything and then we'd just mime along to what we'd recorded. I mean, you know, we filmed that, the, the opening song on you know, in 2,000 meters above sea level in a desert in Tenerife. So I think filming and singing live there would have been very, very difficult for sound. It would have been impossible. Um, so we just, uh, yeah, it was, you know, we just have to mime it. But we got to sing it in a studio, which was great. I'm very happy that you got the chance to not do it blue screen, though you were really in a desert. Yeah, we were there. Yeah, it was a really challenging place to film. Um, very windy and quite cold, weirdly. It looks very warm, but it was, it was cold up there. I hoped so much for you to get some warm places to work on. I know you think, oh, Tenerife, lovely. It's going to be nice. But yeah, it's, it's very, it's quite, yeah, cold and very dusty up there. There's lots of just, yeah, but... You know, it's cool. It was like upside down Game of Thrones. You were standing uh, on a very large place. Someone you may know describes what you see, how many kilometers, in which way is north. And you were standing, and I, th I thought seeing like this yeah, all yeah. the time, whenever the camera wasn't on you. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of it, yeah. <laughs> on Wikipedia, it says, Ramsay is widely considered to be one of the show's most brutal and hated villains on Game of Thrones. Do you think, do you feel this is true or this is... Maybe way over the top. 
Well, the most hated character, I think he should be hated, really. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, yeah, I think it's, it's an honor to have been hated that much. It just means that I did my job well, and uh, thank you. <laughs> Has been a, a week in the last two or three years where Game of Thrones wasn't mentioned in your life? Yeah, there's been a few, but it does come up quite a lot. Uh, the last time we saw you was in a, a very strange, horrific horror movie about some guys in a house. You may remember it. Yeah, but are we talking about barbarians? We are. Yeah. Yeah, I thought, yeah, it, it was a really interesting film. I think Charlie did a great job as a, uh, as a, a directorial debut. Um, yeah, it was, it, it's, it's, a, it's a real ride of a film and it's quite interesting. You never really know what's going to happen and yeah, very dynamic. But yeah, I've only seen it once, I think, yeah, a long time ago. <laughs> Uh, take a look at it again. It's very scary. Yeah, I remember, yeah, it was quite, yeah. And you're one of the few persons uh, who was able to lend your voice to George Harrison and John Lennon for Family Guy. How did that happen? <laughs> I don't know. I just got a call um, asking me to, to, yeah, to do an episode of Family Guy. And I, of course, said, yes, who am I playing? And they said, two of the Beatles. And I thought, yeah, great, why not? And I, I think I played a Russian commentator in that episode as well. Um, yeah, that was, I don't know how, it, I, I have no idea to this day how it ended up being me doing that, but you don't say no to those things. I guess no one would say no to Family Guy. No. And did they flew you in or did you uh, did the takes in wherever you were? Yeah, you just do it in a studio. I just did it in a studio in London, yeah. All the magic is gone right now. No, sorry guys, yeah. Let's jump back to the days when you were 17. You joined a Welsh language soap. Uh, I can't even spell out the title. What was the name? Pabalakum. And it worked very well, but you, you decided to leave and go London Academy of Music and Dramatic Art. From your point of view of today, would you do this the same way again or would you stay on that show? Uh, I would definitely do the same again, yeah. yeah. I, I think it was a really, it was a wonderful sort of, I learned so much doing the soap opera and it's benefited me uh, in terms of my attitude and the way I approach every job now. It was kind of like this incredible apprenticeship that I was really fortunate to, to get to do. Um, but I, you know, I think it's important to sort of challenge yourself and leave the sort of comfort zone and it, you know, and it could have become a real comfort zone and the money was good. I was young, I was earning a lot of money for some of my age, you know, my friends were working in McDonald's and, and I was, you know, filming every day and, you know, um, so I, I, yeah, and it was actually the producer that really pushed me to go to drama school. She felt that I should go. And I mean, I wanted to anyway, but she said, I, you know, I'll help you with whatever you need to, to get yourself into drama school. And yeah, I think you need to push yourself and challenge yourself and throw yourself outside the cover zone, especially in, within an artistic medium. And, I, um, and yeah, to continue to learn with every job you do and everything you do. So I'd definitely do it again, yeah. That's awesome that you had this idea in such a young age. Yeah, I just wanted, yeah, I just kind of, because uh, I think before I even got a part of, in Pablo Com, it was kind of the thing that I thought I should do because I didn't really know, want to do anything else. And, you know, it was either playing music or becoming an actor. And uh, I thought, well, I'll, I'll just try, f you know, when, it, when you're in school and then you do these, um, you know, careers advice sessions and, Someone comes in and right, so what do you want to do? And I was like, oh, I don't know, uh, be an actor. And like, so how, what do you do next? How do you do, what university do you go to? I don't know, you go to drama school, great. I'll try and get into drama school. And then I got a part in Pablo Com, and then I did that for two years. How, well, for a year while I was still at school and then a year after. Um, and then after that, yes, yeah, straight to drama school, which is cool. Let's talk of the second big hit you were performing. It's Papagena, Papagena with the wonderful Steffi Kelma. Yeah. Was it uh, that much fun on set or was it really hard work? Uh, it was a lot of fun, but it was quite hard work as well. Um, and dancing, I wouldn't say, is my speciality. Um, but yeah, it was. Yeah, she's wonderful, um, a lovely human being. I mean, we were so lucky to get her. Um, and uh, yeah, and I, and it's, I mean, you, it was just so much fun doing that silly dance and singing that amazing duet. It's a real honor to be in this film and um, hope I did Mozart's music proud and and hope the fans of mozart you know already fans of mozart enjoy it and that new people can be brought to this amazing music through our film 
The Magic Flute, das Vermächtnis der Zauberflöte, is out now in cinemas everywhere. Do yourself a favor, watch it. It's intense. And it's Papageno, and I'm happy he was here. Hugh and Rian, thank you so much for your time. Thanks very much. And you have now an unbelievable opportunity. You can say into your camera what you always wanted to say, but never have said yet. And I'm excited if you got an idea for it. You got some seconds to think about. For you out there, please try to do new stuff. Like watching Oprah in a movie. It's a perfect mixture. If I would have such thing uh, when I was at school, it would be one of the best two hours of my whole school time. Well, that's a bit depressing. We see us again tomorrow on the Web Talk Show. My name is Nico Gutia. And now the final words of the day by Hugh and Ryan. See ya. Something that I wa wanted to say that I've never said. About the film? No, about you. About me? I've wanted to say, but I've never said. Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs>